What is up YouTube? Welcome back to Work Knife Balance. We're going to be diving into a Katua knife today. Before we get too far into that, I want to go ahead and say thank you to anybody who's already liked and subscribed to our channel. If you haven't, feel free to hit that subscribe button down below. We appreciate all the support and continuing to support us uh, as we have fun with this YouTube channel and bring you some sweet knife content. So you can also head over to Instagram and follow us at Work Knife Balance 939 If you want to send us a knife for review, that's the way to get in touch with us. And then we'll send you back a sticker and some swag when we're done with your knife. So thank you very much for everyone who has done that. Let's go ahead and dive into the knife. We're going to be looking at the Katua KT Telson today. Let's see if it zooms in there, if it kind of gets focused, maybe taking a second, coming in, and we got it. So we're going to be looking at the Katua KT Telson today. This is the uh, Zirconium Alloy and Titanium version with an M390 blade. They've got a couple different versions. This is the most premium version of the Telson with the Zirconium. They do have... Man, I really like the way that looks. They do have two other versions that have a blue and red kind of, I think it's a G10 through the center, like a Gmascus G10, and then a green, so it's a green and black um, through the Gmascus as well. So yeah, uh, M390 blade, which is fantastic. We like M390. It's a really nice steel. Um, it's gotten less popular as I mean it's it's still out there all the time but it's gotten less popular as Magna Cut has been crazy over the last couple of years doing some good stuff there so we'll go ahead and do some measurements on this and then we'll do some side-by-side -side comparisons and I'll give you kind of my thoughts and opinions all right overall we're looking at about 8.15 on the total length we're looking at about three if I go to here, it's 3.5. If I go to here, it's about 3.75. Blade length of about 3.6. We'll say 3.75 on the overall and 3.6 on the cutting edge there. You have a really nice drop point blade with this bad boy. It is super, super fun and uh, really slicey as well. It looks really good. It has a really good kind of lack of billboarding and I like the way that they kind of hid the M390 down here and that hid the Telson on the inside right there so it looks good. So I will say aesthetically this knife has been one of my favorites as of recent. Side by side comparisons, we'll go, go ahead and pull out the NAFS Lander 2. This is the EMP EDC Ronin. I'll give you some side by side comparisons there. Let's see, we've got the mash 2.5 that we can put out there as well and we'll go ahead and pull the kaiser veritas give you four different knives <clears throat> excuse me to look at all of them are a little bit smaller than this one this is a slightly larger knife coming in at that just over eight inches for the total length but absolutely fantastic in itself so fit and finish on this thing is Pretty wicked. I really like it. I'm going to, this knife is coming through the pass around. So this came to me missing a body screw right here. So I'm assuming it did not come from Katua that way. You can see it has a screw on one side, but no screw on the other side. So I'm assuming it came from the previous person that way, or it came through the pass around like that. Um, so it will come with both screws when you get it from Katua. Has a really nice high backspacer, which I like. The little ones are cool, especially if you're gonna um, have some like detailing on the back and everything. But personally, I like the high backspacers a lot more, so I really like that. You have some really good jimping in that backspacer as well. And they gave you a little bit of room for a lanyard right here if you wanted to. I mean, it is a really, really thin, and kind of small hole there to get through. You've got a down and underneath. Um, so uh, you could fit some paracord through there if you wanted to, but it's it's a little bit of a smaller hole. This is not ambidextrous on the pocket clip, I don't believe. It is only the one side carry. Um, whoever owns it might flip it over and see if you can, but I believe it's only one side. They don't necessarily perfectly line up, so I think it's just the one side for the pocket clip carry. And the pocket clip is a milled titanium clip with some sweet detail in itself. You've got the three kind of like speed holes. And then I like the way they lined these lines up to match up with the uh, relief on the lock bar access right there too. So it just, it's little things like that that add some detail and 
just show the craftsmanship a little bit more. There is some really nice chamfering on this back edge here. You can kind of see it is a contoured fit. Uh, because of the chamfering coming down up over and then down on the other side as well that makes it so when you have it in your hand the ergos are fantastic you've got really good jimping on the back of the spine here goes up just high enough for the thumb um, no choke up spot really if you wanted to you could kind of get in here but it's not necessarily designed for it but you don't need it um, it feels really good in hand as is without it. The spine has a flat edge on the back, so not necessarily needing any of the jimping up top for detail work or any sort of uh, tip work that you're going to be doing. You can definitely get in here and have good action and good feel. You get a decent lockup on this, not necessarily 100% all the way over, but definitely to that 50% marker over. And then there is a chamfered edge in there for the lock bar access, so you've got nice action to get in there and get that down. Speaking of the action, this thing is snappy. This thing is really snappy. You can reverse flick out and you've got the flipper tab on the back. I do like that it's a slightly smaller flipper tab as well and it has a really good angle. So the flipper tab is pretty parallel to the pivot, but the angle that you're pushing at makes it so it is comes out really nice right there. Um, typically you wanna see that flipper tab a little bit higher. Um, so you're pushing kind of out to push it up, um, but the angle that it's coming in at makes it really easy to do that. If you were to push on the back, uh, it's a little bit harder um, with that kind of like button push. So you do have the light switch and it's really nice and easy as you get that flipper tab going. As we're kind of looking at the flipper tab and the pivot, they did put some little extra detail into the pivot as well. And you can kind of see the milling through there. To me, it looks a little bit like a, like a ship wheel, like a, a ship's steering wheel. And so I think that's kind of cool or it's like a, a cog or a gear or something like that. They do have a nice little colored collar around the backside and it's the same on both sides. So um, they don't have the, I know some of the Rikes have the RK in there and whatnot. And I've seen, I believe like a KT for the Katua before and everything, but they kind of got rid of that and um, just did the more premium design to it here. And I thought that was really cool. And, and I really liked that as well. There is a small like baby swedge coming through out of this kind of like fuller point here to flip it. Um, and I would have loved to see a little bit more pronounced swedge coming down just to kind of accentuate that blade a little bit more. But in doing so, you wouldn't have the flat edge on the top for your finger. So I think they're trade offs that you go for on what you want in the design style. And there's nothing wrong with the way it looks right now. It, it actually is really nice, really, really nice. So really nice belly. We did talk about how it is M390 steel. Let's see if we can see that right there at the bottom, M390 right there. So these are $215, I believe. No, 285, sorry. These are 285 and the other two versions, that's because it is zirconium. So this is the zirconium version with the titanium. Um, the other two versions that just have like the uh, green and black and then the blue, red and black um, are 250. So if you want to save a little bit, you can get 250, but for 35 bucks more, um, you get the zirconium, which kind of looks cool. I like it. Um, I'm not a fan of the blue and red. The green I do like. So um, if you wanted to save some money, you could go ahead and get one of those versions and for 250 or um, just get the zirconium, which everyone wants this one. It's, it looks that much better <laughs> for 285. I will go ahead and put links below for this. Uh, if you follow those links, they're Amazon links, they support our channel. If it's not an Amazon link, it's just for you to have fun and check out some cool stuff. I don't have much else to say about this. It is absolutely fantastic. I really like it. Um, I didn't actually carry this one day to day just because I had quite a few knives come in all at once and I'm trying to get them through. Uh, but I did flip it quite a bit in just sitting here in the little studio area and hanging out around the house. And um, it's not a knife that's gonna go in my collection, but it is definitely a well-worthy knife. I will say the more and more I'm looking at knives, the more picky I am about what I use to add to my collection and what is just kind of a good knife to bring in to show and, and, and get publication for, for people to see and stuff like that. So yeah, without anything else, I'm gonna leave y'all with that and see you next time, TTFN.